गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास आज यू कैन सी टुडे आई विल बी टीचिंग यू अवर डेरेरियम डेट इज ट्वेंटी एट वॉट इज डेरेरियम बेसिकली यू विल फाइंड द पेशेंट ऑफ डेरेरियम बेसिकली इन द आई सी यू सेटअप और इन हॉस्पिटल दे इज एक्चुअली दे इज ए शॉर्ट टर्म कॉन्फ्यूजन इन द कॉग्निशन बेसिकली देर बी ऑल्टर स्लीप साइकिल देर बी I will I will write it down. There will be alter sleep alter sleep cycle. Not oriented. Remember that in orientation, not oriented to time, place, and person, and alter sensorium. Basically, patient uh, it is found in ICU induced delirium is very common. You will find in ICU and in there are four four causes of delirium. Which is one is medical, one is substance induced like cocaine and or other other psychotropic drugs, or multiple multiple organ multiple organ failure or any kind of multiple disease in the patient, and delirium of unknown causes. Delirium of Unknown causes. One, two, three, four. Multiple disease, multiple organicity. These are the four causes of delirium. One is medi medical, of medical condition of the patient, general medical condition of patient. Basically, you'll find in old age also when there is cellular electrolyte imbalance. When there is cellular electrolyte imbalance, the sodium potassium imbalance, you'll find the patient is behaving abnormally. In a in a like that. Uh, How abnormal they be? They will be. They will be irritable. Basically, they are irritable. They are not oriented to time and place and person. Means, suppose you are interviewing the patient. If you ask the patient, "Tuma naam ki?" He will. He will. He will speak out his name. But if you ask, "Where are you?" "Kotha ya chhu?" So he won't be able to say in which setup the patient is. Patient might not be able to say, "I am the bai de ya chhi." Even though he is admitted in a hospital ICU. Then the next question will be like, "I am so cold, not do food, not bicycle, not ratri." You cannot mention the specific time because you should understand if a patient is admitted in a hospital ICU or a hospital, they they don't have the they don't might not be knowing the exact time, but you should they should be knowing what time of the day, what genit of the day it is. I just so cold morning, afternoon, evening, or night. You should mention that. And ask him, "Kahun? Akhun kot? Akhun kya mon? Shakal bela na, dumu bela na, rat, sunde bela na, rat." According to according to that, you should ask the patient. Basically, the patient patient is unable to say that. Then the next question comes: Who am I, or who is the sister, or who is nursing staff, or anybody, or any relative? You should bring him forward and ask the patient. In any case, to whether the patient is able to recognize the person or not. Basically, these patients are very irritable at times, and most of the times they are restrained to the bed so that they don't cause harm to themselves or to the other patients and other healthcare givers. Now we are coming to delirium, the causes of delirium. There are lots and lots of causes of delirium. Some of them, them are. I will write it down. The causes are substance induced, lead poisoning, or utility minerals, malt. Alzheimer's,
tibia, traumatic brain injury or head trauma, brain injury if, I, if it's better to write brain injury, not traumatic brain injury. Electrolyte imbalance. Lead poisoning. Tick disease. No, basically big is heavy metal. Then I will I will show you they are like uh, over hundred causes of delirium. So we need to do a lot of test and a lot of screening to understand the cause of delirium. So I cannot, I, mean, there, I will write this is some of the common thing, maybe with high diabetic, hypertension, they all can cause to de cause delirium. Delirium is a symptom, not a diagnosis. No, you cannot say it's a, it's a symptom which is found because of some other organicity or psychiatric problem. Okay. Now we will come to clinical evaluation of delirium. In clinical evaluation, we need to know the patient should be evaluated by doing a mental state examination and if possible a mini mental state examination. Evaluation is done by mental state examination. Which is known as MSC, or if possible, you can do an MMSC, which is a bigger form, minocellular minophasic state exam. This is for basically it is used for dementia, but it can also be used to understand whether the patient is suffering from delirium or dementia. The very first thing for mental state examination in this patient is that the patient need to be thoroughly in interrogated. All his previous history and documentation should be provided. We should know the, what the patient is suffering from, whether the patient is a diabetic or not, whether the patient is a hypertensive or not, whether there was any previous injury or head injury or previous history of history of delirium or not. Where, where the age is very important because in genetic patients, delirium is very common. We have found we have find a lot of times a patient is admitted with normal thing. But uh, you are shifted to an ICU setup, and ICU what happens? There, there is there are no windows. Basically, they discovered there is an is a, a AC room which is covered. There is no sunlight because of which a patient is mostly sedated, and the patient is having a uh, are being pushed a lot of drugs because of which patient the orientation changes. Patient cannot understand which is what is which is day, which is night. And that causes a lot of delirium in genetic patients, which is known as ICU induced delirium, which we find find a lot in our clinical practice. In these patients, we should we should do. In a, I will come down how we treat that. We will come come down to the treatment. Basically, on on we we get a reference call from the clinician or the surgeon. To ICU setup, we evaluate the patient by doing a mental state examination, where we have we have to know the patient's history, patient's behavior, appearance, how the mood will be incongruent, the patient's thought will be jumbled up, patient will patient will even be patient will be sleeping at odd hours of the day, maybe the patient might be sleeping but 
you once you, you can understand the patient is in delirium basically if you see the patient is restrained most of the restrained patient in ICU setup are patients suffering from delirium they can be because may, um, multiple causes it can also be also happen because of anti cancer drugs given to any can, carcinoma patient or a dialysis dialysis patient or a patient who is having some kidney problems or any uh, any liver cirrhosis delirium is also com common one of the very important thing which you should know which I was coming to later was known as delirium tremens delirium tremens is found basically in, in alcohol dependence patients what happened what happens here alcohol dependent dependent person he is supposedly he takes alcohol every day so there the blood alcohol level is already maintained but once the, once the ph level of alcohol decreases if the patient is admitted or the patient suddenly decides decides to quit alcohol one fine day so within 24 to 24 to 72 hours, I'm so I'm not used to all these things. That's why it's a bit difficult. 24 to 72 hours, what happens? The patient starts talking irrelevant talk, starts being aggressive, violent. There is abnormal area, there is the altered sleep cycle, patient is not unable to sleep because alcohol is kind of sedative, patient used to go up to sleep after consuming a, a huge amount of alcohol but right now patient is not sleeping, patient is agitated, appetite has decreased, patient is abnormal, patient self care is decreased, patient is not oriented to time pressure person and these are most of the, these are found in delirium tremens, which is found in alcohol dependence, understood? This is a very important thing which you will come to come to see this type of patients once you start attending clinical classes in psychiatry. You will find if lucky if you are there are patients who are, who are admitted for alcohol withdrawal, rehabilitation and detoxification. You will find a lot of delirium tremens patient. Right now there is a patient admitted. Sorry I couldn't bring him because patient is, a patient is distant at the moment. He, he, he cannot be brought here. So you should go to the wards to see all, all these type of delirium tremens patients. Okay. Now coming to cognition. In cognition, when testing cognitive functions, the clinical should evaluate memory, visual, spatial, and constructional abilities. The visual spatial and cons oh. construction abilities are here like Reading, writing, and mathematical abilities. Basically, we uh, for attention, concentration, for orientation, we actually ask the patient if the patient is an educated person. We ask the person to say to count from 100 minus 7, to continue sub subtracting 7 from 100 till 65. Okay? If the patient is not that educated, we can even ask the patient to count, start counting, to sub subtracting 3 from 40. 5 counts, 5 counts should be there or supposedly we also ask the patient to count the, count the days of the week backwards backwards not forwards we even ask the patient the day, the time, the date, date, the month, the year. These are all we are all to understand the cognition of the patient. Like we ask date, time, day of the week, month year 
sometimes the patient in a delirium, a delirious patient, you, you, they should. I will tell you a funny incident. Uh, there was this patient, the oldest patient, who was referred to my dad, my father. And my father every day used to go to the patient, and the patient asked the patient, "How are you?" Patient said, "I am very good, very good." But do you recognize who I am? Well, ha! Happy the doctor also go doctor go, my doctor blah blah blah. And I know you, and very well. And he used to talk very good, very properly with my dad. But every every day the the ladies used to used to come. The patient is unable to recognize anything, unable to unable to talk to us properly. Patient is irritable. Patient is, patient is not able. My patient is not eating on his own, not sleeping on his own. But my dad couldn't find any abnormalities. Later on, once the patient was admitted. He was found to be a patient of dairy. He was he was having a dairy yes, on investigation. But the funny thing is that he could he could recognize my dad from his voice, and he had this connection with his personal doctor so much that he could he could recognize his do, his doctor, but not his family relatives. So it is a very it is a very curious case, which you should always keep in mind. So that's why each and every day, whenever you are evaluating a patient of delirium, your your structure of the question should be changing to understand the the orientation of the patient. You should ask him about who is the chief minister of Bengal, who is the patient, who is the prime minister of India, or some general general question, and ask and get to know how much the patient is oriented, how much the patient is conscious. We ask the date, time, and day of the week. Even we ask sometimes. Where the patient is at the moment, we set up, we set up, or we uh, where or we set up the patient is at the moment. But you, it should be an open-ended question, not a closed-ended question. Open-ended question means that you you cannot give any kind of clue to the patient. You should ask the question just directly and and just note down whatever the patient is replying. Like, "Tumi kotha hai achu?" Can you cannot say, "Ita bari na ghor na hospital." So these are closed-ended questions where you are giving the options to the patient. It's like a multi-choice question, a closed-ended question. But here you should have an open-ended question. You cannot give any any choice. The patient has to reply on his own. Where or which center the patient is at the moment? Which floor the patient is? A patient is in a hospital or a patient is in a patient is to say what time, date, and I have told you all these things. So these are some of the questions we ask for a patient to evaluate the patient's the delirium of the patient. Okay. now investigation pathology and investigation this is a very dicey thing because the only thing is suppose that, that there are so many so many over 100 so many causes of delirium it is very difficult to do all the test And do all the investigation to find out the causes of delirium, frankly speaking. So that's why the history taking is very important. And according to the history taking, we should do the com to normal test. But the basic test we should all must do for any delirious patient. It will be to check, monitor the TPR and BP, monitor TPR and temperature, pulse rate. Who is a hyperparesic patient, a patient who with a high fever, they will also become delirious. That's why you have seen. I have, I think most of you who has read this book, Opu Opu Trilogy on Shoto Jitre. So when the when the when the daughter Opu's sister dies before the die before she dies, she starts becoming delirious. So that I mean when the fever spikes, people talk, people become delirious. They speak things which they don't mean. They have to they speak. Lot of things, pulse rate, blood pressure, 
respiratory rate this should be checked then blood sugar level or i should blood sugar fasting pp should be checked thyroid should be checked lft liver function test liver function test should be checked fasting lipid profile very important in serum electrolytes very common to cause delirium we have, we have found even the normal sodium uh, sodium uh, uh, sodium rate in the body is 138 to 150 even if it is found that the sodium level has gone below 132 patient has become delirium has gone into delirium serum electrolytes and they have been found serum electrolytes lead sodium potassium electrolyte we monitor temperature temperature and now come to and very important ct scan of brain and eg a very common thing is that is very you might find it very one astounding is a patient who has undergone orthopedic operations basically femur or or any type of operation or or any implantation or anything post ot when the patient is in icu they very much go into post operative cases which we i will give yeah, post operative cases we have we have found the patient has gone into delirium and of of 10 the orthopedic surgeons call us for a detailed evaluation and treatment of a delirium of patient of delirium understood eeg is very important we will find slow waves and if the patient is very agitated there will the, there will eeg changes obviously so this is very important now coding if this is known as we coding is not important for you to so leave it the causes of delirium i i will i will write to some causes or uh, basically you like first write the definition of delirium in dsm 4 the delirium is characterized by a disturbance of consciousness and a change cognition that develop only for a short time over a short time understood the etiology is like they are saying uh, you divide the etiology i have told like the central nervous system disorder metabolic disorder system illness meta me medications even medication can cause delirium the lead poisoning mercury poisoning any type of overdose of from heroin or cocaine or any other substance alcohol for that matter then cardiac failure arrhythmias there are so many causes you cannot just write all the all the causes or you cannot remember all the causes of delirium even a neurologist won't be able to tell you all the causes of delirium the diagnostic criteria of delirium is important but it is not important for you at that moment it is important for us so i won't i won't crack that i would won't tell you all the diagnostic criteria but you should at least understand a patient is suffering from delirium if you see one that is the most important thing you have you need to know treatment 
basically the delirium we are we treat the patient we we change the all the all all the sleep cycle in this patient you know the patient of delirium patient kabhi subah sota hai raat ko jagta hai and the, the all the sleep cycle to basically even a, a patient of jet lag they also can go into delirium that's why we have to give the patient with sedatives and antipsychotics and we have to alter the alter the sleep cycle of the patient along with that we have to, we have to have some changes in the patient some behavioral change like if the patient is an id in icu in this delirium or the patient is in delirium we should always advise the patient the patient should be kept propped up or patient should be kept in a sitting position and facing the window in the day so that his brain gets oriented to which is a day and which is night and if the patient should only be kept only be patient should only be kept in the bed at night but this is pretty difficult if the patient is in an icu setup and patient is on iv fluids and iv iv drugs but once the if the patient is shifted from icu to a normal general bed it is possible then we have we give the patient with antipsychotic like haloperidol quetiapine and benzodiazepine even like lorazepam right now in recent studies recent conferences it is suggested that quetiapine is one of the best choices to treat treat delirium unless and until and unless the patient is suffering from any heart disorder and the primary primary thing is to find out the find out the cause of delirium and treat it that is very important if you want i might go through all the causes etiology of causes because there are so many i have to obviously see the book that diagnosis in the central nervous system disorder like seizures migraine head trauma brain brain tumors of abdominal hemorrhage subdural epidural hematoma abscess intracerebral hemorrhage cerebral hemorrhage non hemorrhage stroke tangential ischemic stroke in a metabolic disorder there is electrolyte abnormalities diabetes hypoglycemia hyperglycemia or insulin resistance systemic illness like infection like sepsis malaria viral plague lyme disease syphilis or abscess trauma change in fluid states dehydration or volume overload nutritional deficiency burns uncontrolled pain heat stroke high altitude in medication like pain medication can also morphine or or mefenidin can also cause delirium antibiotics antivirals and antifungal fungal steroids anesthesia cardiac medication anti hypertensive anti neoplastic agents anti cholinergic agents neuroleptic malignant syndrome hirschfeld syndrome even herbal teas and nutrition supplements can also cause delirium gymson weed oleander fox club hemlock defense basia and amantaria to the phalloides they can also cause delirium they are botanical substances which are found which are which can hemlock these are all used to commit suicide or homicide cardiac problems like cardiac failure arrhythmia myocardial infarction cardiac assist device like pacemaker cardiac surgery can also cause delirium pulmonary chronic of copd hypoxia cid ads acid base disturbance endocrine adrenal crisis or adrenal failure high thyroid abnormality parathyroid abnormality hematological anemia leukemia blood dyscrasias stem cell in transplant renal renal failure uremia hiads hepatic hepatitis cirrhosis hepatic failure neoplasm neoplasm neoplastic syndrome double abuse in the uh, intoxication and withdrawal toxins intoxication and withdrawal heavy metals and aluminium and so on and so forth these are the some of the common causes of delirium so there are over hundreds of causes of delirium and we need to find out the cause of delirium and treat it and unless you find the cause of delirium we are only giving symptomatic treatment so we should find we should try to find out the cause of delirium and treat the patient understood so i hope next time in, maybe next year or i don't know when we will we'll come to class once you come to class i will take you out on a tour i will take you i will take you out to an icu patient and so that i can you can see first hand how a delirium patient behave or how a patient look like and how how to interact with the patient how to give the proper treatment to our delirious patient this is very common and you will find a lot of patients of delirium in the next class i will teach you teach you about dementia 
Dementia is also a psych but also a cognitive disorder which goes and patient of dementia can go into delirium and you will find that these are both are a little bit interconnected because the way of interviewing the patient and way of going about it is a little bit the same but these are all neurological disorders this you should know because right now psychiatry is not only purely psychiatry it is neuropsychiatry so these are all neurological causes diseases which you should know and the questions will come delirium is a very big it is a long note or a short note which comes from delirium I hope any problem you can always contact me and ask your queries. Thank you.